Grimlock say sleep time is over. Get out of bed. Okay, if you remember from last time, um, we're trying to find out about this Long Jar deal. We're trying to find out when it is. It's some kind of black market deal with the Chi Yu men and the Mad Angels. And apparently two foreigners called Tony and Smith uh, will know stuff about it. So we're going to be looking for them later on. But for now, we're just going to go back to work as usual. And uh, we're going to go into the forklift race and we're going to intentionally get fourth place. And that will complete the collection of forklift figures. We will have forklifts one through five. And that's all of them. Now this race actually has a time limit. It's about six minutes long. If you take more than six minutes to complete three laps, then the game will automatically end the race and you'll be forced into work. Although six minutes basically means you start work at half ten, so you actually have less time to move boxes. When the time runs out, Rio just goes, Oh no, I'll be late for work, and then you're just forced into Man, work time. You, really you still get a number five uh, forklift though, Here's so you still get a prize for taking part. No biggie. Thanks. But yeah, here we are. Forklift number four. That's the entire collection of forklifts. Time for work. Give me your best. Gotcha. Today you gotta move cargo between warehouses. Gotcha. First take a crate from here over to warehouse number eight and unload it there. Then take a crate from warehouse number eight to warehouse number 18. You know where that is, right? I take this to warehouse number eight. Then I take number eight cargo to warehouse number 18. Yep, but careful you don't get mixed up. The quota's written on the map. I got it. Okay, forget all those other forklift runs. This is the real deal. You have to move two sets of boxes this time. One from here to warehouse number eight, and then the other one from warehouse number eight to warehouse 18. I, it might sound a bit confusing, but it's not too bad, really. A little bit longer, and um, well, you have a higher quota. You have 10, you have to move 10 boxes. But it's not a problem because both types of crates count, so you really have to move like five of each to meet the quota. So it's nothing too bad. It's, in fact, it's pretty easy. You, you're kind of making two different trips, and uh, I don't know, they're, they're both kind of routes you've been to before. Like warehouse number 18, you've been to a bazillion times. So, yeah, here's the other bunch of crates. Uh, they're slightly, they're coloured slightly differently. Then you just have to move them. Just gonna slowly go around that pedestrian. The game kind of automatically slows you down when you're near things, so that, that's kind of why I slow down sometimes. But yeah, not much else to say really. This is the most, I guess, demanding task we've been given so far, but it's nothing Rhea Hazuki cannot handle. And then after we put this crate down, go back to the area outside the old warehouse district to pick up another box and head back to warehouse number eight and the cycle continues after this guy gets out of our way God, doesn't he realize that our job is the most important although now that I think about it I wonder what is in all these crates I mean there's a lot of them and they all kind of look the same maybe these are all toy capsules yeah that's it that probably explains how there's so many around here so I'm not going to subject you to like a billion of those. I'm just trying to quickly get this last crate in before the work shift ends. It's nearly lunchtime. If I can get this in before lunch, it'll count. Oh no! Gotta get it. Whew, just in time. Lunchtime, eh? I'm gonna settle down and go straight! 
gets me a real job, work hard and marry her. Marry? But she's too young. Don't you know, Ryo? Girls can get married from 16. But to Goro? Well, Goro, he's not so bright, but he's got a heart of gold. Yeah, but Goro... <laughs> well, bro, be seeing you around. See ya. You know, we could all learn a lesson or two from Goro. He has dreams and aspirations for a better life. It doesn't matter that he was a delinquent or a bully at school. What's important is he's planning for the future. He wants to work hard and marry a girl and settle down and, and basically do all the things that Ria Hazuki will never do. Do you know what Long Jia means? Long Jia? What's that? I heard some of the Mad Angels guys talking about something like that. Maybe it's a code name or something. Well, lately I have seen them. Something about some Hazuki guy. I see. Yeah, the Mad Angels are totally onto us at this point, but that doesn't really seem to bother Ryo at all. Here's something I never really showed off before. Um, you can call your own house uh, while you're out, but I don't know, the conversations are never really that interesting. Yes? Oh, ine san Jorzai, is something wrong? Is Fuk-san there? I think he's in the dojo. Shall I call him? No. That's okay. Very well. Oh, Dusan. Yeah. I understand how you feel, but there is too much happening all at once. Thank you, Inesa. Try not to worry so much. Bye. Okay, so we have some time to kill before our lunch ends, so we're just going to practice more karate. As you can see, we've improved our twin swallow leap, that little weird jumping kick I just did. It now does two kicks when you do it. So it's slightly better. After scaring away pigeons, it's back to work. It's already this late. First take the cargo to warehouse number 8. Then go to warehouse number 18. And so, straight back to work, as usual. I've never really mentioned this before, but I guess it is kind of interesting. You can see now that there is a warship in the background, off in the distance. And uh, behind the old warehouse district is the US naval base. And uh, you can't actually go there, but I guess that is accurate to the actual... GET OUT OF THE WAY! That is, um, there is an actual US naval base in Yokosuka, Japan, and I guess that's supposed to be it there. I, I don't know how accurate sort of Yokosuka Harbor is to the actual Yokosuka Harbor in Japan, but I, I guess most places in this game are loosely based off real life places, so... There you go. Anyway, as you can see, we've got our last crate. We're a pretty productive day, but then we get interrupted by an event. Now, this is the scene where we meet Tony and Smith. Uh, if you remember, Ryo wrote down there are two foreigners that he rarely sees, but... Well, well once you see them, you'll instantly recognize them because we've beaten them up like four times already. It's them. Haha, they won't see me coming in this forklift. Hi guys, uh, don't mind the fact that this crate is horribly lopsided, it's not dangerous at all. Got a question. You know about the long jaw? What? What did you say? You know. I. Don't. Know. Hey! Hey, wait! It occurs to me that long jaw might be easily confused for some kind of euphemism. Oh no, the frame rate. Hey Bob, help! I'll get rid of him. Holy shit. You idiot! You crazy! Hey Pedro! You need help? Seriously, where are all these trucks coming from suddenly? Wow, those workers had absolutely no reaction to Ria Hazuki dancing around them like that. It's just like another day at work for them. When's the long jaw? I I don't know. 
I'll break your arm. Jesus but Christ. I don't know, I swear. Only the boss of the Mad Angels knows. Who is the boss? It's T Terry. Terry? Please, don't tell anyone that I told you. Or they'll send me to the bottom of the sea. Oh. Where is he? I don't know. It's the truth. Terry's real careful. So this quick time event is actually kind of interesting because it has two different branching paths which have very slightly different outcomes. Hey Bob, help! I'll get rid of him. Now if you pick the path on the right here, you don't have to dodge the truck that's coming on the left. It's kind of curious that the pigeons only fly away as soon as Rio runs past them, and not when Tony and Smith do it. Okay. I guess Tony and Smith aren't particularly threatening to pigeons. Also, it occurs to me that I have no idea which one is Tony and which one is Smith. The game never really tells you, so... yeah. Anyway, after this, you get a very slightly different cutscene. It, it's pretty much the same cutscene with the other guy, except the animations are reversed. <laughs> When's the long jaw? I, I don't know. I'll break your arm. Stop! I ain't lying. Only the Mad Angels boss knows. Who is the boss? Ah, uh, it's t t Terry. Terry? Please, don't tell no one. I told you. Or, or they'll kill me. Please. Where is he? I, I don't know. Terry's real careful. Even I don't know where he's at! <sighs> now another thing about this, uh, because it's kind of a long quick time event sequence, the game is a little bit forgiving in how many times you can screw up, but if you mess up too many times you will fail the event. But you don't fail because the guy gets away or you lose sight of him, you fail because a fucking truck comes out of nowhere. I have no idea how failing a quick time event so many times determines whether or not a truck will crash on the harbour or not. Then again, a lot of the trucks seem to be acting very strangely in this event. For some reason, there's a boatload of these super speeding trucks as soon as you're chasing these two. None of these guys are ever around when you're actually driving your forklift, although that would have made the work shift a lot more interesting, I guess. Also, yeah, there's a funny way to fail. If you pick no direction, Rio just looks like a complete idiot and runs into the wall. So yeah, that's the quick time event sequence, kind of fun. Immediately after that sequence, your work shift ends, so we never get to deliver that last box, unfortunately. Got your pay. Here. Thank you. No, wait. Yes? Someone came to see you earlier. Really? Yes, a young man in a suit. He asked me to give this to you. Thanks. The Mad Angels are after you. Beware. Guizan. Ah, the Long Ja. Maybe Master Chin knows about it. Master Chen, is Landy coming for the Long Jaw? Why do you know about Long Jaw? I got it out of the Mad Angels. So, is Landy coming? Landy has nothing to do with the Long Jaw. Only the lowest Chiyo men members are involved. But Terry and his gang have arranged transport for Landy to a ship. He's acting as a guide for Landy, so as to ingratiate himself with the Chi Yo men. Terry and his gang already know about you. And that you're trying to stop the Longjaw. 
The items we deal in are expensive. Paintings, calligraphy, antiques, gems. Terry's gang deals in contraband. The next big shipment is drugs. If they get established, our market will be destroyed. If our trade route is disturbed, it will cause trouble for us in China. So, now you see. Go home before you get hurt. I can't do that. Someone as young as you should not be involved. Tell me when the long jaw is. I cannot tell you. But if you can be patient, and listen to my counsel, no harm will come to you. Father! As written in the letter to his father, I'm bound by my promise to Ju Yuanda. I will hear no more of this today. Very well. I'll back off for now. Your father would not have wanted you to throw your life away so senselessly. So we've learned some interesting information, that the Mad Angels leader is a guy named Terry, and um, that Master Chen is trying to stop the Long Jia. I'm not sure at which point Ria Hezuki learns that they're trying to stop the Long Jia. It might be something I've missed, but then again, I guess since we know that Master Chen and the Mad Angels are rivals, it's probably easy to assume that that's what they're doing. Tom. Hi! You're looking good. I'm always chillin'. If you ever need help, just ask so me, So because Master okay? Chen has successfully convinced Thanks. Ria Hazuki to back off the whole Mad Angels thing, we can actually go back to Debrita before night time for the first time in ages, so we're just going to quickly... Son of a bitch. Just missed the bus. There's <sighs> only one thing to do, then. There's a friggin' bus voice coming every 30 minutes. What was he friggin' I gotta give up, uh, 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 the funky river, uh, uh, uh. Let me take you on a trip. Let me take you on a trip. So Master Chen told us to be patient for now, and we're going to back off the whole Mad Angels thing for the moment. So I'm going to use this as an as an excuse just to dick around town. Eddie. What? Um. Hey, about Nozomi. She still seems upset. Whenever I try to ask her, she starts crying. Any idea what's got her so upset? I don't know. Come on. Eri was worried because Nozomi seems depressed lately. Suppose I should be concerned too. Just, just, just maybe. Just a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Oh, anyway, it's been a long day. Been moving boxes between two different warehouses, and we chased some guys through the harbour. And we haven't had a drink all day, so we gotta refuel ourselves. Time for some refreshment. I haven't mentioned this before actually. Um, I guess it is kind of interesting though. I kind of assumed that a lot of people knew this already, but in Japan, the vending machines had product placement. They were actual Coca Cola machines. So you get to pick between Coca-Cola and then there was like Fanta and Ooh. Grape Fanta and then Sprite and also the coffee was also like a, a branded coffee ah, as well. Good. So yeah, that was just a bit of product placement in Shenmue that didn't make it to the English version. Now I decided to play darts again. I, I know what you're thinking, why the hell do I keep playing this so even though I say it's a terrible game? And it is, it's a shit game. But you, so know, this is the last free game. you know, I'm actually doing quite well. And, you know, I have a lot of money to burn, so I might as well spend some time playing this game. And also, yeah, since we're on the third free game, we have a chance of winning a prize, and I'm not turning down a prize. Okay. 
So let's see, I'm, I'm just fast forwarding this because, you know, I'm not going to subject you to this terrible DOS game. Hey, not too bad. And well, we're on course for our high score, so we can't be doing too badly. This is it. Alright, the last dart. Let's make it count. So close. I almost got triple 20. Oh, well, at least we got a new high score. The best. The best. Wow, man, you're pretty good. You won a prize. Here you go. <laughs> I always find this kind of hilarious because of how much the camera Thanks. has to zoom in on the prize because it's so tiny. It's like, here's your prize, and it's just a tiny, tiny figure. But then again, I'm all for tiny, tiny figures, and I'm going to celebrate my win by visiting our favorite bar. Saijo How's it? Yeah. What is it, Ryo? What happened to your Do spine? You know the man called Terry. Ryo, if you get involved that deeply, you'll risk your life. I'm not worried about that. What? What are you thinking? In any case, you be careful. You hear? That's all right. Uh, Saijo-san, are you okay? I mean, Saijo -san, yeah. About this Terry. I don't want to talk about him. I suppose. Saijo-san, about this Terry. Go on home early today. I suppose. I I think I'll do just that. Yeah, good good idea. Second thoughts, let's play with some toy capsule machines because we have a shitload of money to spend. And she's the virtual fighter machine because I haven't really used one. that before. Might as well increase our toy capsule collection a fair amount. And of course this it won't cool. hurt to have a few of our favourite Virtua Fighter characters in my collection, like Pi. Kinda sounds like a silly name. I, I know it's again. Chinese, but yeah. And we have Lao. This is cool. Who looks like that guy from Dragon Ball. I should try again. Next up we have Akira. This is cool. Akira seems to be the lead character of Virtua Fighter. Maybe I don't I really remember another. a whole lot about the Virtua Fighter series, other than the fact that I was pretty shit at it. Like, I couldn't go do anything right. And of course, already we're getting duplicates and shit we don't really need, so yeah, great. Well, it's not like we're short on money, so we might as well keep spending. I mean, it's not like we're going to give this back to Fukusan or anything. <laughs> Hey, what's this? It's not Jackie Chan. It's a different Jackie. I should try again. So eventually, I kind of give up on the Virtual Fighter machine and move on to the Sonic machine to see if I have any luck trying to get that last figure I don't have yet. But alas, we don't have any luck. I spend a little bit of time on here, but eh, not, not really much point in recording it because it's all duplicates. So, let's just go home and call Nozomi as usual. Last thing to do before we hit the hay. No one's answering. Oh, that's weird. She's not picking up. I hope she hasn't gone back to Canada already. That means no more awkward conversations over the phone. I always like those. Oh well. Anyway, after a long day, the best thing to do is to go to bed. Good night, everyone. See you all tomorrow. I should go out and get some fresh air.